بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد The system of deen is not based on logic on intellect The more one, one engages in deen engages in amal and his yaqeen they will make the unseen seen and the visible invisible alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaib so when you speak about baraka as well it is bringing iman in the system of allah belying the system of men and handing our our matters to the system of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the west describe imam ghazali rahimahullah they say he wasn't an individual, he was probably an academy, it was a name of an academy. It was not possible for one person to have achieved so much in such a short span of time. Unfortunately, when a person is part of the dunya and the people of the dunya, then when we say baraka, we think of getting rich, making money, finding a box of treasure, retiring at early age. It is not only confined to that. For example, baraka in time, baraka in health, baraka in afia. So, different forms and treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at uh, today, people marvel and, and consider time travel. So, Nabi Ali salatu wasalam traveled for Mi'raj. If we document the journey to Baytul Maqdis, to the first heaven, second heaven, till the Arush. And then going down, conversation, Musa wasalam, going back up, how many times? It could take many, many, many years in the normal sense of the people of the world. So what Deen has achieved, nobody on earth can ever achieve it. But this Barakah is for the people of Iman. And we have to have yaqeen. For example, with regards to risk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي السَّمَاعِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُوَعَدُونَ وَفِي السَّمَاعِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُوَعَدُونَ That your sustenance is in the heavens, it's not on the earth. And then Allah takes an oath. إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌ So, Thus Yaqeen, three friends were traveling, they came to a hose, a pond, they looked into the pond, they seen an expensive pearl. The first person said, I'm a master swimmer. He dived, exhausted, returned. The two friends laughed at him. Friend number two said, let me show you, he dived in, swam, exhausted, returned. Also laughed at third friend, said, let me show you, you people don't know how to swim. He got in, he swam very exhausted, returned back. They also laughed at him. The three of them lied down. And a traveler came past and seen them very tired and exhausted and said, what's your parishani, your grief? They said, look into the pond. He looked inside. He looked down. He marveled. He said, oh, what a wonderful pearl. Then he looked up. He said, let me get it. So he didn't dive in the water, he went to the nearby tree, climbed on the tree and on the branch, the pearl was there. وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُوَعَدُونَ We are swimming on this earth, looking for our risk, looking for اِتْمِنَانْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَدْمَئِنُ الْقُلُوبِ Contentment, everything that we are looking for is not found on earth. It is found in the asman, in the heavens. So this yaqeen. So the asbab of baraka five were completed. Number six, at-tawakkul ala Allah to have trust in Allah subhanahu wa taala. لو أنكم تتوكلون على الله حق توكله. If you had trust and reliance in Allah, how you should be. لا رزقكم كما يرزق الطير. How the birds are sustained and provided for. Allah will sustain you like that as well. So believe in having this yaqeen, this trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huzayl bin Ayaz rahimahullah say that there was a person who 
went out and he sold some of yarn for a dirham and he wanted to purchase some food flour. As he was walking, he came across two men who were in a dispute. Each of the men were holding the other by the head and quarreling. It was like a coming to become in a first fight, an argument, a serious argument. So he stopped, he said, what's happening here? So they said that there's a dirham and we're fighting who owns this dirham. So he said, if you're fighting over a dirham and your lives are at risk, here's the dirham. So he went back home with no food, nothing. He formed his wife. She said, Ni'm al-amal, what a great deed you have done. Let's see what we can gather. They gathered all their possessions and said, go and sell it. So he went, he was unsuccessful on his way, returning home. He came across a man selling fish. But there was a odor as well. So he said to the man, you have something you cannot sell and I have something that I cannot sell. It was probably the end of the day now and uh, an odor started emanating. So he said, let's do a barter. So the man agreed, gave him the fish and he took the goods. The man returned home, told his wife, let's prepare the fish. We are dying of hunger and uh, we can consume it. As soon as she cut the fish open, she found a pearl. So she told her husband, oh my husband, I see something smaller than a egg of a chicken. It looks like a pigeon egg. The husband came, he inspected it. He said he never seen anything like this in his life. He was also bewildered. He said, I think so, it's a, a precious stone. So he said, you know what, I've got a jeweler friend who deals in these stones, let me go to him. They met and he took out the pearl and he said, how much is this worth? The jeweler examined it and he said, I will give you 40,000. But obviously they were friends and they had taqwa. He said, I've got somebody who's a bigger expert. If you want, I'll take it to him. I can give you directions to him as well. And uh, he can give you a value. So he went to the second jeweler. He said, I will inspect it. I will pay you 80,000. But he said, you know what? This looks like it's very valuable. I know somebody who can pay you more. So those days, they understood the risk is from Allah. Not I can extort this person and get it for nothing. So he gave him directions to the third jeweler and he offered him 120,000. He said, I don't think so anybody can offer you more than this. So he agreed to sell it. Money was counted and he was on his way back home worth 12 heaps and each heap was 10,000 dirhams. As he arrived home at the door, there was a beggar and uh, he invited the beggar and the beggar entered and he said, you know what, this is my story, take half of it. Allah sent you at the right time, there is some khair and hikmah, why Allah has sent you here? So the beggar took six heaps and he left then he came back and he said, I'm not destitute nor poor. Allah sent me to test you. And since you passed the test, Allah has given you 20 qirats in lieu of that one dirham which you gave. You were a cause of unity. Although you were need, in need of it, you sacrificed your need for another brother. Allah has given you 20 qirats in exchange and thus what you've received now, these loads, these 12 heaps, is only one qirat. Allah has kept the other 19 for you in akhirah. So tawakkul and trust, he gave it away, he could have thought what's going to happen to me, what will be my situation, but فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ Trust in the being that is ever-living, everlasting, eternal, whose treasures are eternal and unlimited. Number seven is istighfar. This was covered in detail on the topic the door to knock on. But Nabi alayhi salam has said, مَنْ لَزِمَ istighfar. Hold steadfast, be constant in Asking for forgiveness, making Tawbah. جَعَلَ اللَّهِ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ ذِيقٍ مَخْرَجًا Allah will make a way, Allah will find a way out of every constraint. 
وَمِن كُلِّهَا مِن فَرَجَ And from every distress, every form of anxiety, Allah will find an opening and relief for you. وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And Allah will provide risk from unseen, unfathomed sources. This is just by holding steadfast into istighfar. So ulama say the one istighfar is astaghfirullah on the tongue that we should be perpetual and punctual on. So somebody can decide I want to make morning and evening minimum hundred times, a thousand times, five thousand times istighfar. And part of that is istighfar of the qalb, the heart to have this regret and remorse on the way and the pattern that we live our life and how it is not close to the awamir of Allah and the sunnah of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When making istighfar also ulama say al-istighfar min al-ma'asya from sin wal-istighfar min al-ghafla from negligence wal-istighfar min al-hudur ila al-ghaybuba that you remember Allah but you forget Him in salat we're supposed to be remembering Allah in dhikr we're supposed to be remembering Allah but we forget Allah. Likewise there's other uh, muraqabas to make when making istighfar. Then number eight when we do anything and we start any amal take the name of Allah. So whether it is sammillah when we start eating, when we do any amal we should start with the name of Allah SWT. Kullu amrin dhi balin every matter of significance where the name of Allah is not taken Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim فَوَّ أَقْطَعَ It is amputated, it will be deficient, it will not culminate and reach completion. So everything that we do take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then with regards to eating, if you want barakah number nine, we should eat from the side of the plate. إِنَّ الْبَرَكَةَ تَنْزِلُ وَسَتَ الطَّعَامِ that the barakah descends in the center of the food, in the center of the plate. فَكُلُوا مِنْ حَافَتَيْهِ وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِنْ وَسَطِهِ So we should eat from the side. So as we are eating the barakah is piling up and eventually a person has the most barakah. So a person should avoid eating from the center of the plate but from the sides. The number 10 when eating meals to eat together kulu jami'an wa la tafarraqu fa inna al-barakata ma'al jama'a eat together do not eat separately for blessing is being together so firstly as a family a time of food and we should be on the dastarkhan then the food should be brought not the food is there then we come and sit down we deprive ourselves of barakah Secondly, it's not everybody comes on their own time. Everybody should be there. Thirdly, we should eat meals together. So the husband and wife, one plate, three, four, five, the entire family eats from one plate, one, one kuncha. Yadullah ala al jamaa. That increases the barakah, it increases the love, it increases the mahabba. Number 11, licking the fingers. إِذَا أَكَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَلْعَكْ أَصَابِعَهُ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَدْرِي فِي أَيَّتِهِنَّ الْبَرَكَةِ When one of you eats your food then he should lick his fingers because he does not know where the barakah is, where does the blessing lie. Likewise, cleaning the plate, barakah, cleaning the morsels of food that are on the side of the plate, barakah, we should make sure, ulama very particular, Hakim Sahib, you should encourage even when we have a dessert, then people leave the leftover. Take your finger and lick it, clean the bowl as well. We drink tea, we leave the chai at the end. So try to suff it so there's no fragments of water left over. Number 12, make salam and enter in the home. Afshus salam bainakum. Salam should be very common. And even if we enter a house and there's nobody there also, then still to when you enter, إِذَا دَخَلْتَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِكْ فَسَلِّمْ When you enter your houses, make salam يَكُونُ بَرَكَةً عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَيْتِكَ 
It will be a means of blessings for you and your family as well. So making salam, then taqwa which we've covered, covered extensively. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا Number 14, to start early in the morning. That's the mizaj of deen. Allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuriha. Allah give barakah to my ummah in the early part of the morning. As it's Sakhar bin Wada'a radiallahu anhu was a trader, a merchant sahib. He said, I would dispatch my caravans for trade and commerce early in the morning. And they would uh, return prosperous with a lot of gains. So, Allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuriha. Nabi alayhi salam made dua for the early part of the morning. Imam Tabri rahimallah in his tafsir was sabbih bil ashihi wal ibkar. He's saying ibkar is from the matla fajr ila waqt al duha. So from the time fajr sets in, when sahri ends, fajr starts till duha, when the sun rises and you read your ishraq, salat al ishraq, salat al duha. So much emphasis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking a qasam wal fajr in that part of the morning. Likewise, the time for ibadah, man salla al fajr fi jama'ah, fa ka'annama qama layla, spending the entire night in ibadah, and the nawafil of uh, fajr before the two rakats, la tatrukuha, it is better than the, the, the everything that the dunya can contain. Even if horses, the wolves have to crush you, don't ever miss these two rakats. Man salla al fajr. في جماعة ثم كعدا يذكر الله حتى تتلو الشمس. So you read your salat al-fajr. You remain in your place. You don't talk to anybody. You wait for sunrise. Then you read ركعتين. كانت له كأجر حجة وعمرة أي مقبول and accepted حج وعمرة تام 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 complete حج وعمرة. So from Ishraq, two to four rakats, then immediately after that, chast, which uh, we should become in a habit of as well. So, that is the best time in the morning. First, khairat, sabiqu ila maghfira, the people who are rushing towards the goodness of dunya and akhira, badilu bil amali saliha, rush towards good deeds. So it is a time of virtue, it is a time of salah where a person uh, maximizes on the time أَثْقَلُ الصَّلَاءَ عَلَى الْمُنَافِقِ The most difficult salah for the hypocrites was Isha and Fajr. On the day of Juma, we are told the reward which is multifold. One of the conditions is وَبَكَّرَ وَبَتَكَّرَ Again, to start early. Then it is a time for Qiraat of Qur'an. وقرآن الفجر إن قرآن الفجر كان مشهودا. so the time for Quran تعهد قرآن فوالذي نفسي محمد بيده. so this is a time for Quran. likewise a time to catch up من نام على عن حزبه من الليل. a person for what reason couldn't do his ibadah that night. then after fajr كَأَنَّمَا كَرَاهُ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ We'll get the full reward. It is a time of dhikr. وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَسْغِيلًا To be pardoned and to be particular about dhikr. Urwa ibn Zubair say that Zubair forbade the children from sleeping at that time. Ali radiya Allah say مِنَ الْجَهْلِ أَنَّوْمْ فِي أَوَّلِ النَّهَارِ It is juhalat and ignorance to sleep at that part of the morning. Abdullah ibn Amr used to say that there are three types of sleep. Khurk, wa nawmu khalq, wa nawmu humk. So the first type of sleep is a sleep at the time of dua, where sun rise, where a person is supposed to wake up early in the morning after fajr and not sleep. The second one is, the normal beneficial one is qaylula, fi nisfi nahar. And the last one is no mulhumq, fools, where a person sleeps when it's a time of salah. Ibn Abbas saw one of his children sleeping at a time and he said, Kum, 
Are you sleeping at a namu fi saati alladhi tuqassamu fiha al-arzaq where sustenance is distributed? Umar radiyallahu anhu say, Iyaka wa naumatal ghadati. Don't sleep at the time, fajr time, tal duha ishraq. Why? Because it is mabkharatun. It will increase flu, sickness, disease and majfaratun. It's a means of causing dispute in your nikah and breaking your nikah. Wa maj'aratun. And it spoils your nature and your tabiat. Ibn Qayyim was very particular and he said that uh, excess sleep kills the heart, makes the body heavy. And he said the best of sleep is when a person needs it. And in the beginning of the night is the most beneficial. And uh, to wake up for tahajjud and to sleep in that last part. And uh, the closer a person goes to sunrise and sunset between Asr and after Fajr, he said that is harmful. And after Fajr, some ulama say it is makro. So in Deen, we have to sleep early, get up early. People of Ba'at will sleep late and get up late as well. And you should say that sleeping in the early part of the morning, that it is a means of the removing your risk it is removing your baraka and it is God's with great harm. So a person should not, it will remove, dispel calamities, afat, etc. And he is written in detail with regards to this. So we should not be sleeping that time of the morning. The amal for today is to give sadaqah at the time when you don't have, uh, in secrecy. Giving charity in secrecy protects one from calamities. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.